All right, today we're going to be putting on the Crimson Trace Railmaster Pro. It's a CMR 301. Just figured I'd give you guys a you know how to when I put these things on. Usually, you go on like on some type of rail, right? It doesn't have to be a AR15 platform. You can put it on an AR308 platform. You can put it on MPX, you know, P90 if you want to, Scar, whatever. Something that has a picatinny rail. I usually prefer the top rail. Now we have your light and your laser right next to each other. You know. Instead of being off to the side, making it hard to put inside cases, uh, getting snagged up on top of things or like that, just makes it more streamlined for me. But you do you, right? So here is going to be the adapter. It's clearly marked. It says muzzle and an arrow, so you know which way to put it. That way, when you put on the laser light combo, right, it'll go in the direction you want it to. Instead of, I mean, you should figure it out by the time you get it on there if it's backwards or not. But yeah. So then you start kind of just placing it on here. There's two little tabs here that go inside these rail slots. This requires four slots minimum to put in there. Um, so if you're using an M-lock rail, you know, you want to put a little M-lock rail in there, you need something that's at least four slots to mount this to. Just so you know, three will not work, four, all right? So I'm going to put it, we'll start right here. And there's actually one particular way that this goes. So you can see the muzzle, it says arrow. There's a tab right here. You're going to clip it on this way, and then you're going to take it off this way. It's a lot easier than trying to do it the opposite way. I did that on purpose so you can actually take this on and off pretty good so uh, we'll put it here now the placement is going to be personal or depending on who you are so i don't like how this is too far back but if you want it to be like this you can so you can put a front sight here because this laser and the light do clear a front sight if you needed to clear a front sight that way you have your front sight base here your rear sight back here depending on what you're running that way you can get full length, a longer sight radius, be more accurate, a longer distances, blah, blah, blah. Some people run them a little bit farther forward, and they'll have a front sight behind here. Um, you can do that if you want to. This has a pressure switch. So I'm going to install the pressure switch, and it's going to be behind here. So then you can put your front sight in between the two, the actual unit and the pressure switch. That's cool. But then there's a button back here, too. So for instance, if your pressure switch goes down, you still want to be able to actuate this button just in case, and this dial, because this dial does have the off laser, laser light, and then just light here, and those all actually glow in the dark as well. I'm not very bright at all, to be honest with you, but it's enough for you to see if you need them. So this is pretty much in line with the front part of the rail. I usually try to keep it behind the muzzle. If you don't have a suppressor or anything like that, you can put it up, or I'm sorry, if you don't have a suppressor, keep it behind the muzzle device. Um, just because that blowback's going to come back onto this actual lens. And I mean, whatever, you just got to clean it more, that's all. But if you have a suppressor, <clears throat> you can run it a little bit farther forward and prevent a lot of fouling on top of there. Just letting you know that if you do that, you are going to get carbon fouling and stuff like that on the actual lens of the laser, the laser and the, wow, the light bezel. <clears throat> so, I usually keep it right around there, but we're going to move it back one more just to keep it in line with the rail system. So what I'm going to do now is pretty much take it off, kind of remember where it's at. Sometimes a little plastic piece doesn't want to come out, so we're going to do that again. And then we're going to try to, to test fit by clipping it on. There you go. There you go. All right, so we're in the same position. But now we're going to take the unit off take this off because it actually uses M-lock screws, T-sections, right? So T-sections are going to go down into these little provisions right here. Now some people will put blue Loctite inside there so it'll hold these little provisions that way when you turn it upside down they don't fall. Not to Loctite them in for any type of reason or anything like that but so that suction from the blue Loctite being inside there and the provision hole will keep the nut from falling out. Pro tip. Now I've kind of lost my, my spot, so here we go again. All right, so this needs to go one more rail slot farther forward, I think. Yes, right there. All right, so we're going to clip that on. All right, and then what I'm going to do is take some blue long tie with like a toothpick or anything, maybe a, a punch or something like that. I'll put some blue long tie inside the thread. Uh, the T-nuts down there.
That way, when you're shooting the muzzle device, you're talking about the, the recoil and bolts, or the, 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 the vibration, the recoil, everything like that from it will kind of help keep it in. So. A little dab will do you, not really. You need a little bit more than just a little dab. I like to coat the threads pretty good because believe it or not, when you actually put the, the bolt through there, it takes a lot of that Loctite and it pushes it away from the actual inside of the threads and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> not away, but like through, it goes all the way through instead of actually like, you know, look, saying where the threads are at. So, push Loctite down somewhere. Mine happens to leak. Um, it's just Thing that's wrong with it, but this is Fermatex, just as good as the blue Loctite, even has the same number, everything like that. You go from there, and that's a paste, so it actually sets up a little bit quicker. So then you're going to find your appropriate screws, right? It comes with two screws, right? You're going to use the shorter ones, the longer ones are for if you're going to use the M lock adapter, which is going to be in a separate bag, right? It's going to be right here. You know what M lock looks like? That's what M lock looks like. If you're going to put it on the M lock section, you're going to use the longer ones. We're using the Big Tinny Rail section, or Weaver Rail 1913, whatever you want to call it these days. So we're going to use the shorter ones. So now we're going to take this, set it on top. This comes with a handy dandy tool with a flathead and just a, a bar for no reason. But the flathead is for adjusting your laser. And it's going to come with an Allen key. The Allen key obviously is going to be used for these bolts. But if you don't if you lose the Allen key or whatever, you don't want to use it, you can use a screwdriver, which I'm going to end up switching to. That way I can get a little bit more of a crank onto this. And you'll see, I don't know if you saw, but when I push this one down, it actually set the, the laser light unit up a little bit now. I don't know if you can see it moving now, just barely, but it'll set back down. So I recommend doing a little bit hand tight and then hand tight and then go back and forth. And then once you feel like you get to that point where you're snug, you can go switch to a screwdriver or something like that. And uh, from that point, crank it down a little bit more, which I'll do right here. sure I got the right one all right so I have a ratcheting screwdriver nothing special it's just hard I bought it because it was white and black and uh, none of the other kids or anything like that or guys are gonna steal it nobody has white screwdrivers so that's why I mainly go with the white tools so do to where you see fit just remember that the all these pieces are polymer but that is pretty snug just take your hand and try to like you know try to try to move it but don't break it seems good for you leave it don't mess with it anymore after that. And now you're gonna take off your little water plug for the pressure switch. Now that it does go in a certain way, you can see there's a lock channel here. So you're gonna follow the instructions here. There's an open padlock and a closed padlock. So open padlock, you're gonna line this channel up with that. It also has an arrow on here. And there's a O-ring here for the seal. It does require some force. You're gonna get into there at first and then you're gonna push, push, push. You'll see it and you'll feel it go past and then you lock it. With our uh, clockwise turn at this point you can take your pressure switch and put it wherever you'd like some people run it like this which is either way it's going to require cable management so a little zip tie or something like that some people run it a little bit farther i usually like try to get behind the gun and i like to go grab it where i grab and anywhere within this area is where i would like to push the switch you also want to keep it to the point to where you can run forward and grab this if you need to i can't i can't turn the light on right now because the battery is actually charging and yes, it is a rechargeable battery. It is on the charger right now, actually. So, so gotta wait for it to get a full charge. That way I don't ruin it. So we're gonna put <coughs> this on here, and that should be good to go. But here's the issue, cable management. So as you can see, I'm gonna tuck it underneath on this side all the way, and then I'm going to take a zip tie that I bought specifically for this stuff. Small, little black zip tie, and we're gonna put that on here. Now you can also take this rubber gasket here, you can move it around. You put it in front of the button to get it out of the way. I just leave mine hanging. Little danglies are okay. Or I just push it downwards to get it out of the way. All right, let me go get that zip tie real quick. <clears throat> Sorry, I gotta buy these zip ties and I gotta hide them. It's, uh, I'm not the only gunsmith that works here, and things get stolen pretty quick. Although, it's just two of us, so we know who took it, right? 
but I've got those from AutoZone. As a matter of fact, there's a whole pack of these smaller black ones, smaller white ones, bigger medium-sized white ones, and bigger black ones. Specifically, well, if you need sizes, there you go. Hopefully that's going to focus for you. All right. Run the zip tie. I'm going to run it through these little holes here on the top portion of the rail. I'm not going to go through the bottom just to keep it a little bit more streamlined. And you're going to want to do it in such a way to where this portion, when you cut it off, is not going to cut you in any kind of way. Obviously, you don't want to get chewed up while you're running your laser or your light combo. So, put the laser underneath it. That actually might work better if coming from the other side. Take your time doing this stuff. The better it looks, the more cool you get. You know, ten percent accuracy every time you get something that's sensed down pretty good. And just remember, the more stickers you have on your rifle case, the more tactical you are. So I also try to put this. I'll, I'll pull it back in a way, where this piece will be inside of a rail slot at least. That way, it has some give. And that's it. If you wanted to do that, now some people will take this and move that piece right here that I'm talking about all the way over. So I'm gonna to try to do that right now. Uh, this is like gonna let me do it. Every time I keep doing it, it's just, it's just making me tighten it more and more. All right, <clears throat> so then find something that you can clip that off with, scissors or something, but then you wanna get it, you wanna get it flush. So let's see if I can find something that's not gonna mar this up. I am putting this together to actually sell, so. Never mind, let's use the scalpel that I got from my wife's work. So, make sure you're not gonna cut the firearm itself or ruin the coating or anything like that, or cut your wires. So take your time, like I said. That comes off, and there's nothing here. Rub your finger across it, all right? There's nothing here that's gonna mar you up or chew up your, your fingers or anything like that. Now, after that, of course, it's all said and done. Go here. I've done this plenty of times, so I don't have to take the actual rifle off and then do a test fit, make sure it's where I want it to go. So I just get behind the rifle here, press it on, good to go. Now, I will say this is momentarily on, so you press hold and then let go, it will turn off, right? And then you press it once, it should stay on. Press it again, it will turn off. Same with the actual button here. And there is a way to adjust your lumens because this is a variable lumen output the optic. Uh, not optic, sorry. <laughs> peak. The peak lumens is a thousand, and it should go down to, if I'm not mistaken, 500 and 150. And so you have to press the button like four times within like a click or so, really quick, and then it'll it'll flash, letting you know that it's gone down in lumens. And you keep doing that, and it'll remember where you left off, and it'll keep it there. So that's it. Hope you guys learned something today, at least about some Picatinny rails with the inlock T-screws or anything like that, or just learning about the actual Crimson Trace Railmaster CMR301.